What's going on coaches? This is Coach Matthews with kmatthewsfootball.com. I'm here again today with my dad, Coach Tom Matthews, who's going to talk about his special teams package, specifically his spread punt. Thanks, Kevin. Um, obviously, talking special teams is very important. Uh, we all know the importance of it. I've been very fortunate to be the special teams coordinator at Porter's Northern High School, um, where I, I had a head football coach and other assistant coaches that, that really all bought into the importance of special teams, as, as we all talk about it a lot. Um, and we have a unique way, I think, of, of getting in and teaching special teams. Uh, unique system that allows us to really give it the importance that, that we all talk about that it should have. We all know special teams is one third of football. We talk about not giving it lip service. And then I think, you know, because of time, we get caught up in, in basically going out and just doing team portions of it and not really breaking it down like we would offense and defense with individual, group, and then the team period. So, um, we have found a way to do that that I think is, is quick, efficient, and, and allows us to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish as a special teams um, units um, throughout the week as we prepare for a team. Also, you know, we watch film of the opponent's special teams. We make cards of the opponent's special teams. We have meetings with our special teams so we show them what to expect uh, from the opponent. I think that's real important, and, and I think it, it helps to the success. And we can all look back at big ball games when we've had failures. It's usually been something involved in the special teams that, that caused a critical uh, change of possession, a critical uh, moment in the game where we didn't execute. So we have to give it the importance. Now, today we're going to talk about the spread punt portion of our special teams. And I'll discuss those individual and group things here real briefly before I get into it. So if you look, um, a lot of people do the shield punt now, they, they do spread punt, they, they have many different variations of, of punt protection that you can have, but it is critical to your success. You have to be able to punt the football in that change of possession, not allowing the other team to gain field position from that, and certainly not allowing the team to, to block a punt. That changes virtually any game you play in. If you give up a block punt, the chances of winning the game critically fall because of that. Um, so in our spread punt, um, we're going to talk about certain things. We're going to break this down into groups. Obviously, the outside guys um, are the gunners. And I have a, a special teams gunner coach, and he's usually our wide receiver or DB coach. But coach will take them during the individual period. So when we come out for pre-practice, and we're having our center snap and our punters punt, and instead of having a line of 20 punt returners and kick returners and extra holders and extra snappers, I go through and I say, okay, these three guys are going to return punts today. These three guys are going to return kicks. Um, deep snappers, you're working. Um, I take the guys at the centers and guards and tackles and the, and the uh, up backs, and they come with me. And we work the individual skills of that position. Uh, the punter and the uh, personal protector work together with the deep snappers. Um, now what we do also, we work extra point and field goal virtually every day. Uh, the offensive line coach handles that, so we're constantly doing protections um, in every day of special teams. So he's doing um, the protection of that every day. Um, some days when it's our live portion, then we go over and do it, but we do some portion of extra point and field goal protection all the time. So in our special teams, so we talk about the individual period. So I'm going to work, I'm going to bring a center in, two guards, two tackles, and then we talk about teaching the five S's in, in my spread punt. The five S's that I think are important, okay, and it's number one and two kind of go together. It is stance and split. So just like any other portion of the game, your stance and alignment are critical. So in our stance and split, if I'm on the right side, I'm going to have my left foot forward, my right foot, kind of a heel to toe stagger, underneath my armpits, hips down. I, I don't mind if they put their hands on their, uh, on their pads, um, but we're going to have our shoulders back, our eyes up, because we have to be able to see and count so we know who our protection number man is. Um, center, is his job is to snap the football. On the left side, their right foot is going to be up, heel to toe stagger, hips down, hands on, on thigh boards, um, eyes up, looking for their protection scheme. So their stance is pretty simple. It's basic. We let them get comfortable, but it has to be square and it has to be consistent. Some guys, the taller they are, the, the bigger their stagger, but we want to have that same stagger because it can be important for the next part of our S's. Okay? When we talk about our splits, we varied this. 
one foot, two foot, three foot. Um, for, for sake of, of normal, we're probably about a two foot split all the time. Sometimes we go three foot, but normally about a two foot split across the board. That includes our, gun, our outside guys, our, our uh, contained guys. They're going to be two by two. They kind of can reach out with that hand, and if they're even with the hips of the tackle, they're two yards back, and again, same stagger for them. Okay, they're going to have, if they're on the left side, their right foot's going to be up. If they're on the right side, their left foot's going to be up. Okay, so we're constantly working the stance and splits. And so we start with, with no defense across from them. We get to the line, and we make sure that we can get lined up right every time in our stance and splits. And then our third S is our steps. And this is what we have to coordinate. This is where we spend a lot of individual time on, getting ourselves down. At, and when they're looking inside and that ball is snapped, as we go on, on the center snap, not on any sound, they're going to take two big steps back with their back foot. So they're going to go step, step, and they're getting their hands cocked and ready for the next step, which is the strike. Now it's critical as they take their steps that they stay square. We're trying to get back off the line of scrimmage to give us some time to read the, the movement of the defense as they come, but we're doing this against air every day to start. So they're working on their stance, their split, and then their steps, and then their strike. And our strike, we're going to, if we take our steps, we're going to wait for them. We're not going to attack them and get off balance, but as they come, we're going to shoot our hands up from our waist and try to get the bottom of the numbers, and we're going to punch. We're going to stay square. We're not going to chase people, we'll show that in a minute, but we're going to stay square and we're going to punch them with our strike. And we're going to strike, and as we strike, we're going to hold for 1,001, 1,002, and then we're going to go. And so the next S is sprint. So again, first air, we're working stance, split, step, strike, and then we work on our release. Now on our release, it's important because we have aiming points. Okay, We have areas where we have to go and we have to get to. Okay, so if I'm one of the up bats, I'm trying to get outside to contain. So I'm getting outside the hash, thinking about keeping my inside shoulder, okay, obviously on the outside shoulder of the turner. Nothing can get outside of me. I'm the contain man, and that's on both sides. So as I, I do my job and I strike, 1,001, 1,000 go, as I release, I've got to sprint to my aiming point. At the same time, gaining depth down the field. I can't run wide and then turn. So I'm gaining my width as I'm running down the field. The tackle, both tackles, same thing. They've taken their steps. They're coming back two steps. They're going to strike, and then they're going to sprint. And their aiming point is just outside the hash. The ball's in the middle of the field, keeping my inside shoulder on the outside shoulder of their turn man. So I'm gaining width and depth as I'm getting down the field. Guard taking his two steps, striking running down the field inside the hash about three yards. He's real tight on that shoulder, but he still keeps the same concept. If he has his inside shoulder on the outside shoulder of the return man, we have a good uh, phase on the run, uh, returner, and we can kind of hem him in. Now, these gunners, okay, and we'll get back to everybody's assignment, but the gunners, they've got to beat him on the release, and they are running for the nose of the return man. They are not contained men. I do not want that returner to split the gunners. I want them to make him bubble. So they are not the containment. They're not going for the outside shoulders. They're going for numbers. And they're going to make him bounce. I don't want him going straight up the field. So they've got to do a great job of beating that block and then getting on a path to be able to force him to bounce their way if he comes. Never can we let them split. And we work that drill every day with, with pads, guys running down the field, and the Return man trying to get up inside of him, and we want to make him bounce. Okay, obviously we want the, the, the big tackle down there if they can, but if they can bounce it, that's really important. Okay, so before we get into where we're going to, to come outside, the other thing that when we come to the line of scrimmage, we're going to count left to right. And we're basically a man blocking team with some zone principles. But we're going to start from the outside in. This is number one, this is number two, this is number three. We're not counting the man off the line of scrimmage. We'll read him as he comes. If he comes late and he twists or anything, that's how we have to have the zone concept, a little bit of help. On this side, it's three, two, one. We're always counting outside in. So the personal protector comes up. In this case, he would look, and he sees three to the left, three to the right. He's going to make a 33 call. 33, solid. 
So that means we can pick these guys up. We've got enough on each side to man block them, okay? And the center knows that he can create a great snap. He can take his about a step and a half back. We want that perfect step, but he's still coming back because we want to create that wall. But the center can release right now, and he's going to go down the field. We don't need his help on the protection in 33, okay? So the outside guys know they have number one. So as one comes, they're going to square up. They have number two. They have number three. The guard has number three. The tackle has number two. The outside guy has number one. And they're going to square them up. Now, what we're always doing is we're always helping inside. So I'm going to punch. But if I have to help inside with my inside arm, my M, so I stay square. So that's why we stay square. We don't turn and just focus on our guy. We get our steps. We strike, but we can also help inside and we stay square and we give ground. We don't want to turn. Okay, we want to stay square and have that. So that 33 protection then, after he does a stance split, he takes his steps, has a great strike, 1,001, 1,002, go. He's running outside, the hash in the sideline, keeping his contain area. The tackle, just inside the hash. The guard, or outside the hash, I'm sorry, the guard just inside the hash. And we're running to our landmarks down the field. Now, as we run, we've got to keep our eye, obviously, on the return man. We've got to know where he's going. What we don't want to do is we don't want to run past the ball. So we've got the, the punter letting us know right, right, left, left, short, short, just like a lot of things that we've always done, okay? but we want to make sure that we're communicating that. And as we start to close and think about keeping our inside shoulder on the outside shoulder of the return man, we're shuffling down inside, staying square as long as we can so that we can react back out on that ball. Contain, we have to make sure it stays inside. And if the ball breaks past us, then we've got to fold back and kind of slam the door on it if the ball starts to break past us. So we've got to be good football players. We run down and keep that contained. We want to make sure that it bubbles. You can see why it's important that it bubbles, and then we start to close on it. So again, when we're doing our individual period, and this would come into more group, where we're individual work and stand split steps, then, then we start to get into our, our strike and then our sprint. Now we're doing kind of a group period where we're going to run down the field, we're watching them, we're blowing the whistle, they're stopping, we're checking leverage, making sure that we're getting to those points. We also are going to work a drill where we let him get down inside as we sprint so that we have to slam the door on. Personal protector is safety to the right, punter is safety to the left, stand behind the main wave. So we've broken this down so that every player knows their specific skill and they become experts at it and we work it twice a week once the season gets going and I have certain days where I'll, I'll go around kind of during uh, our flex and agility period, and I'm saying, okay, hey, you come with me today, you come with me today, I need you. So I don't end up with, with 20 guys over here working individual. It's basically the, the seven guys that are inside plus a couple of the subs, okay, so that we're working those. And then when we go team time, we bring over, we put a scout team over there, we have the cards, and we're going to use the other team's return. So we're really breaking down the stance, split, steps, strike, and sprint of this, okay? Now... When they start to add people, we have to communicate. Because we know they're not always going to come with just three on each side. So if we have our same alignment with two foot splits, and now let's say they add. So now they've got a guy out here. So now we end up with four on that side. We know they're going to have people out on the gunners. Okay? And the return man. Make sure we're not playing with more than 11. It's hard to beat them. Okay? So now we've got four on the left, three on the right. So we start here. One, two, three, four. Three, two, one. So now as he comes up and he starts to count, he's counting 43, 43. And he will tell the center... I've got four left. The personal protector has four left. So we know if we've got four there, the center still is in good shape. Okay, he's going to pick up, the personal protector is going to pick up number four. So as I take my steps, 
I know I've got number one, I've got number two, I've got number three. Now, you look at that and you say, well, four's got a free run. Well, this is where we have our zone because he knows he's got to help inside. So as the guard takes his steps, he's punch, punch, and he's slowing that guy down enough so the personal protector can slide over. He's got number four. Okay, back here we're still the same, four, two, one. All right, the center can take his steps and release, and our responsibilities don't change as far as downfield. Okay, now if they were to put an extra here, so now let's say they move, we'll just put it for move here, now he's called, now there's 44. Okay, so they put him on the line, they're going 44. So now he's got to communicate that. 44 is his communication. So the guys know there's four on the left, four on the right. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. Now, to keep it simple, this guard knows he's always blocking number three. Tackle's number two, outside's number one. So they're picking the same guys up. Okay, so what he's going to say is center four left. I'm right. Okay, so now the center is going to drop and he's going to pick up number four. So when he snaps the football, he's got the perfect snap, he's back, boom, he's got number four. And we know, again, in our individual group time, three's got to help that center. So he's taking his step, punch, punch, and so it's man, but we're zone principal staying square and we're helping each other with our hands, just like two's helping three and one's helping two. Okay, helping inside. Personal protector steps up and takes four to the right. So now we 44 communication, there's no problem, we're still in good shape. And we, again, we have to work that all the time because they have to communicate, they have to know their steps, but they don't panic. He knows he has one, he has two, he has three. One, two, and three all the time. Or excuse me, three, two, and one on that side. Guards have three, tackles two, outside guys have the number one. Okay? Now, if they overload us, Okay, we'll get all this chicken scratch off here. If they overload us and they put five on the side. So now let's say they go punter's foot side, they're going to go five. So they're one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Six, seven, eight. We know they got to have guys on the gunners and the returner. Okay? So now they're eight. So one, two, three, four, five, three, two, one. He's got three, he's got two, he's got one. We know the guard has three, he has two, he has one, okay? Center's gonna pick five, he's got four. Okay, so we just communicate it that way. It's gonna be 53, 53, overload left. Overload left. I've got four, center, you've got five. And again, they use names usually. You know, Mike, Mike Smike, you've got five, you've got five. So he knows he's stepping and we're getting our inside help and we're punting. And we do work a little bit on the punter, knowing that there's five there, so as he catches, he can walk to his right a little bit and help us on this edge, because they are getting a little advantage on the edge. But again, now our communication of 53, our landmarks don't change, we're still covering the punt the same, but allows us to communicate and handle pretty much anything that they come at us with. Now, real quick, if they line up in 33, and they send somebody from a second level. Or if they have any twist games. This is where you have to really work this in group because we know we've got one, two, three, three, two, one. So as they're taking their steps, we have to work on if number four comes late. Okay, so if they end up with a four man coming here, and that's what the protector's looking for, left to right. And they're also looking to help. So he's looking for the four late, all right? And then if they twist, let's say that three goes all the way out here and two comes around here. They know when their man disappears, they're going to yell twist, and they sit and they wait. They don't turn their pads and look for their guy. They know that if their guy goes, somebody else is coming. So they're looking for who's going to be number three after the ball snapped. And again, you have to work that in group time where guys are coming, or you have to work where they drop one and they sin, and you really have to work on the four late so that this personal protector can step up and he's looking for that number four, and he's going to pop in and take that number four, okay? So that, that it, it covers everything. If they have any twist out here, and this is real critical because a lot of times this guy wants to chase him down inside and he comes, 
We want to protect that inside gap, but if they're doing it with their steps, boom, now they're just sitting there and they're looking with their eyes, now they can still punch, punch, and they have control of the line of scrimmage as they do it. Okay? So again, this is our spread punt. I know there's a lot of ways to do it. I think this communication system works really well. Um, when you do have a breakdown and you have a block, you can certainly break down the film and see that it usually happen from somebody turning their shoulder pads or not communicating. One of the things when we get up there, we're actually pointing them out. I've got 55, 44, you know, they're pointing them out to each other, they're talking, they have to be able to talk, and that comes from the individual and group period that we have. Um, and then we break that same thing down. If we were doing kick return, um, kickoff coverage, whatever we're doing, we're breaking it down into individual periods. We're giving the coaches something to do so that when we come together, they should be pretty good at it. So I might work with the, the front five on their drops and they're numbering who they're going to pick up and we have another coach working with the, the returners and the up back in, in that regard and who they're picking up and where we're trying to run. So we break it down individual, group, and then team time. And then we have specific days where we work them so that we cover everything. And uh, make sure that you're scouting it. Don't just go out and put your stuff in. Watch the film. Draw cards up for your kids of all their special teams. Find the strengths and weaknesses. And you can get an advantage in the special teams. Thanks for listening and uh, hope this helps you a little bit.